We're now going to turn to the way Guy Kawasaki conceptualizes both bootstrapping and what he calls enduring, keeping the business going over time. Bootstrapping is a really uh, key idea. It's not a Silicon Valley kind of idea, even though Guy Kawasaki is a Silicon Valley guy. Uh, but the whole point here is to use internal and personal resources as much as you can. The reasons why are kind of obvious, and yet sometimes people forget that when you are getting an external investor or a lender, they are getting something back from you. They are getting ownership, or you are paying them interest. And so there is a cost to that, even if it's not a, a specific out-of-pocket cost. And that's what's meant by uh, identifying personally generated funds or internally generated funds as being cheaper. There's a key idea here called bricolage, which is a French word, uh, although it was actually coined by an American entrepreneurship researcher, which is this idea that successful entrepreneurs make do with whatever is at hand. And at one point, I taught this concept to a class that had a bunch of French exchange students in it, and they just started laughing. Because apparently, bricolage refers to a very particular style in France, which is the old guy who like, you know, uh, um, holds everything together with bailing wire and duct tape. Um, here in the US, we, we've started started thinking about bricolage as being more like the MacGyver kind of thing, clever use with ex existing resources. And so the advice is fairly obvious to use as many internal resources as possible uh, and to avoid burning cash. The last one, the advice can vary. Um, if you're really looking at truly bootstrapping, then you do have to generate revenue both as quickly as possible and as cheaply as possible. On the other hand, if you are doing a, a high growth business, there is every reason for you to, to get as much market share as possible as early as possible. And maybe uh, do it at either a lower price or even with a so-called freemium mo model so that your revenue comes later. So the advice here is for the situation where the, you want the business to be within your financial control. A lot of lifestyle businesses are like that, but not just lifestyle businesses. And um, people talk about Dell in its early days as an example of not just a low cash business model, but a cash positive business model from the very beginning because their customers paid for their computers before the computers were assembled and shipped. So you want a low initial capital requirement. You want people to pay you quickly. I've mentioned in another video about this nonprofit I'm working with, which is getting paid very slowly by various government entities. That's a real problem. Um, on the other hand, you want to take your time uh, paying your vendors, and that can be a dicey kind of thing, something, something to negotiate. Um, it is always nicer if you have revenue that recurs as opposed to having to make a new sale every time. Not spending money on advertising, but using your customers, think back to evangelism, as a way to, to generate word, uh, marketing and word of mouth. And a lot of times people will start out in consulting or as a service business because that has, that's hard to scale, but it has a really nice cash flow before they move into um, a product or an application or something that requires uh, more initial investment. I mentioned already that your time to market and your, ra your, your, your rate of penetrating the market may vary. Um, a lot of times, people that want to keep their business under control will actually choose to grow slowly. That may not make sense from a competitive perspective or from a branding perspective. Another thing that uh, many of us are used to is figuring out the best deal possible for our expenses, which a lot of times means owning something. But when you're an entrepreneur, you, what you want to do again is manage cash, which means the likelihood is you'll be leasing or renting. And there's every possibility that you'll outsource non-core activities because then you're paying as you need them as opposed to paying, uh, paying a large amount up front and then slowly uh, utilizing whatever the asset is or the, the set of capabilities. Um, 
On the enduring side, uh, Guy Kawasaki has a whole lot of, I think of as kind of random advice, and I think it's good advice, um, even though it doesn't necessarily hang together all that well. But the key thing here of, you, if you want to grow, it can't just be about you. You have to be able to delegate, which means you have to be able to trust people to do the right thing. And that's what he means by thinking about the meaning and thinking about mindset. Um, this idea of invoking reciprocation from customers or vendors, um, invoking what he calls consistency. You can think of it as sort of almost like a cult-like identity. The idea here that people know how to do business, not just what to do, but how to do it based on the identity of the organization. And social proof is another, uh, another way of thinking about word of mouth. He emphasizes diversity, and there is any amount of um, of research that shows that the more diverse teams are actually the more creative teams and the ones that are better able to handle various types of stressors, whether they be economic or competitive. And then his last point is super, super key, which is this idea of doing an extreme level of customer support, which um, you see actually being uh, underemphasized, I think, uh, in a lot of um, uh, software-based businesses and apps. And the phrase he uses for this is take care of your friends. The picture on the slide is one of the first Keurig uh, coffee makers. And today we think of Keurig as being primarily a consumer product, um, but it actually got its start in the coffee services for, um, uh, for offices. And uh, the, the guys that invented the Keurig uh, K-Cup were the guys that hated office coffee. They didn't necessarily have a lot of connections in, in that space. And they, uh, one of them is an engineer, and they, they invented the K-Cup, which is basically a single-serve um, brew thing that is preserved with nitrogen, and therefore the coffee doesn't go stale through oxidation. Um, their early machines broke all the time. And they, they talk about that uh, when, they, when they give speeches. I've seen these guys. And uh, the way they handled that was, A, they paid a bigger cut to the companies that do these coffee services for, um, for like industrial parks or office buildings. Um, they gave them a bigger cut of the revenues, number one. And number two, they were super responsive in customer service, swapping out machines, doing whatever they had to to keep those intermediaries happy. And then over time, they were able to um, uh, evolve their product so that it actually worked. But in their first couple of years, they had a great idea that actually was executed very poorly in terms of the product, but they made up for it in customer service. Guy Kawasaki also talks about his, the ecosystem but it's a truly inadequate list. And that's why I would ask you to think more about what you see in the Strategies Ecology article that will be in the next lecture. He talks about the elements of an ecosystem that look an awful lot like an app or maybe, uh, maybe software, like, uh, excuse me, or maybe some uh, consumer or office hardware. Um, but it is not necessarily relevant to every single line of business. And so just be careful of the way he talks about this. For those of you who are in that space, his list makes a lot of sense. And then he, uh, he gives some suggestions on how to operate with this ecosystem. And basically what he's telling you to do is to do what he did when he first got started at, Mac at, at Apple. He was the chief evangelist for Macintosh. And the idea, and so he was that champion that he talks about in the article, and he spent his time cultivating the various components of the ecosystem. Um, it's a key idea, and this idea of don't just have your head down wor worrying about product, but also think about your various stakeholders makes a lot of sense. <laughs>